All right, everybody, it's uh, Ralph Cooper again for Data Visualization. Let's talk about web scraping. All right, so we are going to do this through um, the RVIST package in R. So that means that we're going to use basically Tidyverse and uh, RVIST for data scraping. Okay, so normally when you're scraping the web or you're attempting to, you either have an API or you don't. So an API as an uh, application programming interface. So something like, let's say you want some Google Maps data from Google, or you want some Spotify data from Spotify or something like that, like Twitter, you want to download a bunch of tweets, you need an API access token and you need permission and they, uh, you ask for request and they uh, let you usually download uh, a certain amount of data in a given period of time, right? So there is um, this request that you make, you're granted access, you get data. Uh, but often it's not gonna be like this and there isn't an API. So um, you're forced to go a more brute force or sort of a just go out there and try to take it kind of um, mode. And this is where um, RVEST and CSS and XPath come into play. Uh, we're going to focus on CSS because XPath is a little messy at times. It's not very, um, it's not very clean and easy. So as an introduction to web scraping, it's not going to be the best. Uh, so we're going to talk largely about CSS, but um, these are selectors that um, try to find the HTML elements in a web page that you're trying to download. Uh, XPath is a little finic more finicky, uh, CSS is a little bit easier, XPath is kind of inconsistent, but the advantage is you can actually look for specific content, not just sort of styles or certain kinds of content, you can actually look for specific content with an XPath. Um, uh, CSS selector or cascading style sheet is more general and it can't find specific content, but if you know what style uh, the data are in, uh, what kind of a styled element you're pulling from, like if they're a data table on a web page and you know that you want to pull from tables, that's great. And CSS is perfect and you don't need anything else. Uh, so we're going to focus mostly on CSS for this example. And uh, there, I've got a link here that you can type in your browser about um, somebody talking a little bit more in depth about CSS versus XPath, but I'm going to focus on CSS and we're going to do kind of an introduction. Uh, this is designed to get you started more than to give you a complete course on a web scraping because it would take a little bit more time uh, to do just that. All right, so I'm going to do a problem that I um, use in my Dartmouth version of the course. And we are just going to start with the data scrape because the rest of it are things uh, that you learn in the rest of the data visualization course. So we are going to scrape uh, data uh, information from um, the Ivy League Wikipedia page. Okay, it's got a bunch of things in tabular format. If I go to, if I just type it, Ivy League uh, Wikipedia. This is the page that we'll be working with. And there are going to be some tables. There's actually a bunch of tables. The information that we're going to pull from are this, uh, what will be this table right here. Okay, it's close to the top. All right. But I'm not going to do anything else with that for now. We're going to um, load RVEST, which I've already done, and Tidyverse, which I've also already done. We're going to attach those, and then this read HTML comes from RVEST. And then right here, you put in uh, the HTTP uh, address for the Wikipedia page. So you'll, it matches this. All right. Put it in. Uh, you run this, um, that by itself is going to do you no good uh, because if you were to try to look at it, it would uh, do the following. It would give you a bunch of uh, HTML 
information and that's it. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a list of um, separate pieces of information. And that's where we go down here. And um, this HTML nodes and then the HTML table is where we're, what we're going to work with here. So HTML nodes has arguments for XPath and for CSS. We're going with CSS here, um, the cascading style sheet. And we're going to look for the generic uh, style of table, tabular format, which would be in HTML would be um, indicated with a TD if you're actually looking at the HTML for table data. There's also TH for table header, so like if there was a header on the table. Um, and then we're gonna, so we're gonna pipe from IV, which is just reading in the HTML. So the HTML, we're gonna figure out the nodes that are according to CSS in tabular. And then we're going to pull those tables out of the HTML and we're gonna populate them. And so this quick and easy code is going to take that information. I'm going to run it. And I told you it was a list. If you look at the, the final result, IV tab is in fact a list. If it's a list, it has the structure of a list. So I'm going to just look at the first element, and see what it looks like using double brackets and one. Uh, we could also So this is the information that you find. I'm not inside it. I'm like looking at the first element. I'm not inside it because I'm using single brackets, not double brackets. Um, so this is that first bit, this table over here. So this is actually a table, uh, but we want this table. So if this was the first element of the tabular, it's highly likely that this is the second element of the tabular. So let's find out. So we're going to change this to a 2 and look at it. And lo and behold, it extracted all that information for us right out from this table right here, which is great. Okay. So now, but it's not saved as its own. We want to extract it and turn it into a data frame so that we're not working with it in a list. So that's what I do right here. IVDAT becomes data frame. Um, I, I wrap a data frame around the extracted, we're getting inside the list to the second element, getting inside to the elements and making sure they are a data frame. And now we look at them and we can see, and let's check the, uh, the class of IVDAT and look at it. So IVDAT is in fact now a data frame. And now we can see a series of variables that we can work with. Now here's obviously something that you would want to do. You would check the class of all your objects, so all the variables, and look everything except for colors is a character variable, but we have undergraduates, postgraduates, endowment, academic stuff. Those should all be numerics. Well, the obvious reason why is because there are characters in those variables that are uh, non-numeric. So data transformation would ask us to then proceed to extract all those elements, probably using the stringer package. And uh, there are a bunch of options here when I do some of that. So uh, that's the quick and easy way to do so we're just going to stop on this first example with table with the tabular format because that's uh, that's one form, that's one style sheet, that's one style type, one style element um, that HTML nodes can um, work with. If you want to investigate HTML as a whole thing unto itself, 
So if you want to investigate all the different styles, then we would, um, sorry, look at the documentation and um, CSS selector support is where we're looking here. Um, these documents here, um, we'll talk about all the different CSS selectors available to you. But I do want to mention one more tool before I go, and that is a selector gadget. So selector gadgets are really good tool for, if you don't know which style element you're looking for, um, there's something called selector gadget that will um, search through a website and try to find it for you. Now, it takes some practice. Um, you're gonna get it wrong more than you get it right sometimes, so it takes a little time. But uh, if you go to selectorgadget.com, you just scroll down and you take this thing and you drag it into your bookmark bar and then it's a part of your bookmark bar. Um, and what it does is once you act, you can activate or deactivate it. And what it will do is, um, let's say we want to go to this website and we didn't know anything about it. And we were just trying to, let's say we didn't know to look for tabular style uh, data, right? So we want to get there. So go to the bookmark bar. You see, I have I have selector gadget here. I could also have it where I could just uh, activate it directly on the toolbar. But uh, I'm going to activate it, and it said, see, it's loaded. And then you have this little bar down here. It has X path. So, so you see, uh, this is highlighting a bunch of things. So I'm going to select an element inside the table that I want to find. All the things that are yellow are now what it's looking for. Okay. So if you'll note, I chose that and all the tables with data are now yellow, but nothing else is. So that's actually really close to what we want already. I mean, this is a pretty simple version. So um, if you wanted something a little bit more explicit, then you would have to um, play around a little bit. But here's, let's say that we only wanted the first table, then we would start to do things like this. I want to select this one because I don't want it. Okay. So now let's see what we have. It looks like um, we have some of the tables still, but we don't want this one. We don't want this one. So you see how the, the code for HTML and the CSS gets a little bit more uh, complicated as we try to get down to a particular, now, now, uh, XPath has, so, and get rid of this, uh, XPath, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, CSS and HTML. So you have this structure where you have parents and nodes and, uh, and child and children and all those kinds of things. And uh, so this is what some of this language means here. We're in table data and we're looking for one of the uh, child nodes, right? And uh, this is a jQuery table sorter. Uh, so you have to play around with this and then you take this and you would copy it and you'd put it in to the uh, CSS equals right here. You would put it into the CSS format and you would try it and you would see what you can pull back. Now again, we're going to fail sometimes uh, more than you succeed, but eventually you can get down to the right element. Um, it's even harder for XPath. Um, for XPath, you typically, so you might um, use, let's see, the web developer tools in your, so let's turn off selector gadget right now. Um, turn on your web developer inspector, so that's usually a part of almost all um, web browsers. And you can see the HTML comes up and you have all these elements, so you can go through and do a version of this. But um, so we're in TD, you can see, so table data in HTML. Um, but getting the 
X path, which is basically the the particular path inside the HTML explicitly, uh, is going to be more difficult and um, more finicky than if you're doing it through CSS, where you can say all the generic tables or whatever, all the generic parent nodes or the child nodes or whatever it is. Okay, so that is um, enough for this particular intro. That will certainly get you through the assignment because they're pretty easy scrapes for now. Data scraping and HTML and all that and XPath and CSS, that's a course unto itself. But I wanted to make sure and get this introduced to you um, and you can now officially go and even when there's not an API, you can go and uh, scrape some data for yourself. All right, see you on the flip side.